Good morning. Good morning, guys. We are leaving Gainda and we're on our way to Jandaway. Jandaway? Jandaway, I think it's called. Change of plans again. Um, it wasn't on the list to go to, but we've. Yeah, that's itineraries the, change all the time. Change all the time, that's the whole idea. Yeah. And it's a beautiful day today. It's, Weather has turned it on. It has. So let's get driving, Johnny. I think we've got to go back a little bit to Mundabar Mundabera so we can come down to Jandaway. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, let's go. All right, so we arrived in Jandaway yesterday. Jandaway. Jandaway, I can say so. And we've parked up. We just had a quiet afternoon. And this morning we come to the famous Wombat Cafe for breakfast. They have milkshakes. Yes, they have milkshakes. So let's go see what we can get for breakfast. Let's go. All through the town of Jandaway, there is um, paintings on the power poles. So we'll try to capture some of those along our walk. There you go. So this is where this timber town tree sculpture is. We're in this nice little park. It's got a barbecue and some picnic tables and toilets. Okay, let's we'll see what this is all about. The tent pegger. Oh yeah. See the bloke on there? And he's doing something. A tribute to number four troop of the Jandaway Light Horse, who in 1927, 1928, 1929 won Best Turned Out Troop in Australia for the Perpetual Lord Foster's Cup. In June 1929, Judge Brigadier General C.H. Foote announced the Jandaway number four troop Commonwealth winners for the third consecutive year. On Friday, October 18th, 1929, following a four-day program of street parade, race meeting and military tour de force, the Queensland Governor, Sir John Goodwin, presented the Lord Foster's Cup to the Jandaway Troop. The Governor commented that he had not seen a troop so superbly mounted and turned out. The Star Corps Cup and WA Russell Cup were also presented to number four troop for achieving a Commonwealth record with a celebration military ball held at the Jandaway Memorial Hall being attended by a large community crowd. Interesting. There's something down here too. Looks like it's carved out of wood. And it kind of looks like he may have been 
This was built by the Genway Men's Shed from recycled timber from the Mahan Hall, built in 1922. And it's just a maybe like a jolly swagman. Pretty cool. It's a shame the sun's where it is because the carving on this is really good. Anyhow, let's keep walking this main street. What did you see? Oh, just look at the old fireplace over there. Just cut a hole in the wall and Bob's your uncle. Let's have a look. That's, that's so cute. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? Quite. It's smart, actually. <laughs> and the gas bottle right next to it? Yeah, yeah good. good. This building here is the old National Bank building. It's from 1913, but now it's a private residence. So that's still like probably the um, original walking. I would imagine it's heritage listed, wouldn't you? Yeah, they probably have the big thing. What am I trying to say? Oh, safe. The safe. That's cool. the RSL clock. So this is part of the dingo barrier fence and there's your big dingo. So this is the one I was trying to get you to tell me which direction it went in. Yeah I know but I didn't know so exactly. Does it go from, oh from here? John I don't know. But you should know these things my aunt. And see how the dingoes are all on the other side of the fence see dingo. You know hang on a second you hang didn't realize you do realise they're not real dingoes, don't you? Just saying, oh. just saying, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a bit about the dingo <gasps> sculptures. No, no, but listen to this, John, you'll be very interested. I'm very fascinated. In oh, this. oh. You know how John thinks he's Scottish, right? No, half Scottish. I don't think that's what DNA in this, um, ancestry told me. All right, do you get a feel for this dingo oh, sculpture? Oh, I do. It's, it's drawing me to here. All right. A Scottish sculptor. Oh, I knew it. Made the dingo. Yep. yep. Andy Scott created this two metre high dingo made out of galvanised steel segments. I know, I know I used to like wearing dresses. I mean, they kilts all the time. <laughs> all right. There's your galvanised steel segments. That's pretty cool. He's done that really well. Shame this dingo fence is annoying. Huh, get it? <laughs> so in one of our previous videos we've talked to you about the dingo fence um, it's the long the second longest man-made structure in the world it stretches 5,614 kilometers and passes through Queensland New South Wales and South Australia so it's yeah obviously came through here where were we last time your Laban, I think was the video that has the end of the dingo fence so Cool. It's really sad that a lot of these nice little towns the shops are closed. We're down a side street now. Pretty much everything's closed. It, yeah, except the post office. It's a shame. They just don't make them like that anymore. I just said it's a shame to see these nice little towns and most of the shops are empty. I know. I wonder if COVID did it or, or it's just um, like that. I don't know. Like, it's so quiet in this town, we're walking in the middle of the street. It's a lovely little town, though. It is. On the smaller side. All right, we're going to spin Top around. Hotel. Yep. We'll spin around. So this is the Club Hotel, built in 1913. So this no was the first two-storey hotel in the town. Now the post office in town opened in 1889. I'm not sure if this is the building, the original building, but here's your police station. It's even got a little blue light. Oh. John better watch out. They might come and get him for all his... How is it whenever I go somewhere, someone always has to come over and check me out though? <laughs> 
and they don't mean because he's good looking. We're walking around this um, historical house which we're going to go to next, well, soon. And um, hang on, I've got to sneeze again. I've got sneezes. <laughs> Here we go. And um, yeah, we're walking around. Everywhere we go, people must think he's a hoodlum or something because <laughs> everywhere we go, if we if we're in a vicinity and there's no one else around. Someone always has to come over and, oh, good day, you know, something like that. I know, I'll just walk past it, you know, yeah. Anyhow, let's continue. This is the Janderway Memorial Hotel, erected in 1925 in memory of the Defence Forces of Janderway District. You know how they build these these days, don't you? They would just throw that timber on the ground and just throw a Viagra in there, Viagra in there and bang, it'd be done. A Viagra? Oh yeah. my god, John. And they'd be erected, see? Oh my god, you are fucking slow. Stop, I'm trying to turn the film. I can't put that in it. Why? Oh, that was dirty or rude. Oh, John. Now I've got to do it again. Oh my god. Stop. Alright, we're standing outside the um, school here in Canterbury. Now, the original school was established in 1877 with 13 kids. Um, this school, I've just had a, had a little wander around in there. We've got around about 145 children. There is 12 um, teachers here. Really? Yep. They have a speech pathologist and guidance counsellor and a few a few other people, music teacher, that come in, like they spend a day here, go to another town. And this school is a PDE 10. So it goes yeah, to high school. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Now the original, the actual original school building at Janderway is over at this museum centre that we're going to go to. And then the second building that was built is behind this building here and then they've just sort of extended it on and on so the lady just took me to the original part of the second building mm -hmm. and she's it's all extended but she opened, she unlocked the door and she said this part here is oh, the original part 10 kids, yeah 145 145 yeah, yeah yeah so that was really interesting yeah there you go okay oh and she did tell me i said um these kids don't seem to miss out on anything and she said the idea in these towns is to give them as much as what they would receive in the bigger schools to try to keep the families in town and the parents like it because the classes are more intimate size and so the kids get um oh, much better. you know they get they the teachers have got the time to spend with the kids so they've only got classes of say 10 kids Instead of 30. yeah much better yeah much better. So, yeah, that was cool. cool. Here's another one of those telegraph pole arts. It's outside that memorial hall. Alright, we're going to Athlon Cottage. Athlon Cottage has got some different old buildings. Athlon Cottage built in 1890, renovated 1930 and restoration in 2001. Got the old schoolhouse, isn't it? Here as well. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's open, John. No, probably. Is it Thursday? It said it's open it's Thursday. Thursdays. Yeah. No, it doesn't look like it. Anyway, we'll just have a walk around anyway. Yeah. All right. Let's have a little look, some information about this place. So here's the original schoolhouse. It says up on that board 1899, but when I googled John, it said 1877. Okay, so, well, someone's wrong somewhere. Originally had 13 children in there. Let's have a look at these plaques on the wall. These places are supposed to be open now, but they're not. So this particular school was built in 
This Athlon Cottage John yeah. was built around 1890. Up on the veranda, there's a charcoal, what was it? A charcoal oh, fridge. Charcoal fridge. See this thing here? This white thing. That is a charcoal fridge. Hello. All right, this charcoal fridge is of interest. There's too much to talk about in there. But apparently what they do, okay, apparently what they do inside the door, which is mighty heavy. Okay, inside that heavy door there, it's filled with charcoal. And then a hessian bag gets put over the sides and the bag gets wet. And there's all charcoal up in here as well. Apparently charcoal fridges were left on the verandas because verandas had the most breeze. Um, they've got, the door is full of holes and the sides have got like slats on it to let the breeze through. And then every time one of the women or children pass by the fridge, they would pour water down the slats um, and that would wet the hessian bags, which would keep the fridge, the contents of the fridge cool when the breeze went through. It's quite ingenious, really. So just up here is the slot that they used to put the water in. Then any excess water, after they put the water in the slots, would run down and sit in a drip tray down the bottom. And that prevented the ants from getting in the fridge. Smart ants. They say fridges like this um, would have been used in the early 19th, 20th centuries. So anyhow, I thought that was a cool contraption to show you. This here is a German wagon. This German wagon was first owned by Mr. Abbott of Mount Sylvia near Gatton. In 1894, Mr. G. Schroeder purchased the wagon and two horses from Mr. Abbott for a full sum of 15 pounds. Just quick look at that tree. It's been carved out like a person holding a gun. Oh, it has too. A bit like Ned Kelly. Hang on, I'll go the other side. Oh, there you go. Look, John, it is. It's Ned Kelly. That's cool. That is cool. So Mr. Schroeder and his brother Charlie moved this um, German wagon from Gatton up a bush track from the Toowoomba Range to their farm at Janderway. This wagon was the first of its kind in the district. It was used to carry farm produce and materials to and from the railhead at Warra to their farm. This round trip was 60 kilometers. The wagon has original axles and boxes which came via sea from Germany. These axles would have been fitted to the wagon on arrival. All right, John's favorite thing ever is a windmill. This is a Comet D pattern windmill and it pumps from a 50 meter deep bore. There is a little sign about that but it, it's still when we went past here earlier on the windmill was going crazy behind that is an original shearer's shed i heard that windmills and milkshakes windmills and milkshakes for john that's that's the go okay could you see much about this shearer's shed yeah you know you yeah. know what the pie. it said that this was going to be open this morning This is called the Cresley Shearer's Quarters and it was built in 1907. I wonder why that's all fenced, that tree in there. Maybe so. And then the, the only other building here, John, is... Well, there's supposed to be a baker's oven. Maybe that's that room over there. 
Well, so did I, but um, got a, um, freezer on it. this room here is the cream room. This is the cream dairy, but there's no. We can't get into it. So, all right, I've been saying jammed away, but it's what did she, the lady Jen say? Jen Dowie. Jen Dowie. Jen Dowie. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Jen Dowie. See, I've got John sitting. Oh, no, grab a drink. Got beverage. Guess what? I don't have much info at all. Okay, let's go. Now hang on. Oh. Jen Dowie Jen was first settled in 1862. That's all I got. 1862, that's a, that's a yeah. fair whack ago. Yeah. It's a home to the second longest man-made structure in the world, which was the dingo fence that I've already showed you. Yeah. Okay. Anyhow, we're going to go to Lions Park and apparently the original um, railway line, railway, line, railway house, oh, railway house. station. Railway station. Railway station. He's over there. He's over there. All right. So let's go and look at that. The windmill started. Have a go at this. How cool. All right, we're here at the Lions Park now, which was just over this bridge. It's got little lions. I've never seen that before in the Lions Park. No. That's a bit cute. So the Lions Park, the Lions Park is home of the Jandawi Railway Station, which is just been, I don't know if it's been relocated or if it used to get, um, if the train line used to go through here. It's like there's a creek behind, so I think it's, I reckon it's been relocated. So this is dating back, John, to 1914. 1914. Yeah. I don't think they're old doors. Period? No. This is a cool um, piece of art on the toilets. What'd you find, John? Sit on the drive around for kids. Oh. The oh, look at that. Must go around the whole lines park. Oh, there. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Just walking around this lines park if you're a caravaner, if you come in and come down this way and you need in water. So come in, go to your left and drive down. There's water right outside the um, little mini railway tracks. It's handy to know, John. It is. We, it thought, is. we thought there was a dump point, but it doesn't look like a dump point no, here. No, I don't think so. But there is a dump point at the showground you could access. So. Jandaway. Jandawi. I don't know how the lady said it. Jandawai. However you say it, I'll put the name down here. While here, we stayed at the showground. Now, the showground is slash the race course slash the pony club. Um, can't remember the, the name of the street. I'll put that down below too. But it was great. It was $15 a night for power and water, which was amazing. There are toilets and there is a dump point and there is showers. $15 a night. I believe it's $10 a night unpowered. But why wouldn't you pay the 15 anyhow? So I'll just walk you through to our caravan. When you get here, there is a phone number to call. Now on Wikicamps, everyone talks about Lillian. Lillian is a fantastic caretaker. However, I dealt with a lady called Deb. Um, she answered the phone. She comes around at f around about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, 
to collect your money but she, they do ask for you to call first before you come in and camp so the phone number is on the front here inside this little room is a couple of different brochures on things to do which is handy to have yeah. so basically well at the, at the time we're here she said just drive down and go to your right now to the left over here I'll just zoom in on that That building just in the middle of the screen there, that's got um, a toilets and showers for both men and women. And then you park over to the right. And there's also a little toilet block. I'll wait till I get closer. So down the back there, that um, cream building in the center of the screen, that is also a toilet block, but not showers, just, just some toilets. And all of this is your camp, camp area and you'll see these grey poles. There's one just in the centre of the screen there, one over there near our caravan and so on. Those grey poles are where your power and water are. Like I said, it is the race course as well. And that's just down the back there. And it's also the pony club. I'm unsure where that is um, located. Okay, Johnny, that finishes our time in Jendow Jendowa. Jendowi. 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 Yeah, before I forget, we have got um, Telstra. It's 5G and it's four bars here. So you get good reception anywhere you go here. Yeah, pretty good, hey? Yeah. Um, showground's fantastic to stay at. Heaps of room. Masses of room. It, really, really good. The town is very, very small, but also very interesting. Yeah, every little town has its little hidden gems. Yeah, has, there's always a story to be found, isn't mm -hmm. there? So, yep. And also that little story you've got to tell. Yes, and we're hoping that you're enjoying us telling you. No, <laughs> the story that lady told us in the information centre. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, got so, I yeah, oh, know, I nearly forgot. So we went into the visitor information centre to um, find out where a few places were. The lady in there was telling us that she was applying for or trying to apply for a government grant because this town, there's a story from the old days called the Little Digger. Um, and she said Google it and it's about a young boy that became an orphan and had to come out to Australia to a better climate and they had to smuggle him out here. I'll try to find the links about that and put some information in either at the end of this video or a link at the bottom in the description. But she wanted a grant to be able to put some plaques up and information about the little digger. Yeah, probably a little memorial, like a little yeah. statue of him or something. It was, what she told us was incredibly interesting and it really should be promoted in the town, I think. It should, because yeah, big story behind it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're going past this way, stop here, stay at the town. Stop in all the little towns and have a look around. Yeah. And then they can get grants, because I think the more they can show that the tourists are coming, that you know it gives them a bit more oomph to get that grant and so. the butchers are awesome oh, the meat out here is like unbelievable so much nicer than woolies meat yep yep okay guys that was this little town um thanks again for watching we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you somewhere wherever we are next yep thanks yeah. guys see appreciate ya. it bye